That's the Royal Pavilion, and we're in a town which boasts one of the most beautiful buildings in England. And two piers and lots of lanes. We are in Brighton. Originally called Brighthelmstone, Brighton, Sussex boasts, amongst other things, the fabulous Royal Pavilion, a testimony to its royal patron, the Prince Regent. I have no qualms in telling you all that this is one of my most favourite buildings in the country. And I also don't mind telling you this is the first time I've ever been inside. Share that experience with me. The table is ready as if for a meal set out for the dessert course. I did not know that it's bad manners, also nowadays, to eat a main course with golden cutlery. Were you aware of that? It's terribly nouveau riche, don't do it. <laughs> main, <laughs> main course, I beg you, use the simple silver. Gold is only reserved for dessert. That crystal chandelier in the centre actually weighs one ton and is nine metres high. Helinka, this reminds me of King Henry VIII's kitchens in Hampton Court. Not dissimilar, they're absolutely huge, aren't yes, they? Yes, very, very big. This kitchen was designed by John Nash. Buckingham Palace, John Nash? John Nash, exactly, the very same. And it was considered to be a state-of-the-art kitchen at the time. Now, George was not known as an early riser. I suppose because he liked gay evenings and thoroughly enjoying himself. And he'd come in here of a morning probably yawning and get down to business. Now, this is probably the reason why he was kept up late, because this is one of just only a couple of stalls that they have left. And although he didn't really sing very well, he did love music and thought of himself as a bit of a nightingale. And he employed an orchestra to entertain him. And these are the little stalls on which his orchestra sat. Does that look three-dimensional to you? Optical illusion. That is absolutely flat. But it's painted in such a way that from a distance it looks as though, of course, it's come out from the wall. And this is, well, perhaps one of George's most favourite rooms. Only if you were one of his most intimate buddies could you come in here and, and while away the late afternoons and into the evening with him. Now this was George's music room and it said that when he first saw this room he wept because of the beauty of it. And I must admit, I have not been one bit disappointed about this Royal Pavilion. It is quite stunning, quite perfect. This oriental style here of protective dragons and chandeliers. There's a little door here, and at night it would undoubtedly open because either the prince or his latest mistress would come here and their liaison would take place. Not that I'm going to say anything about that because I'm not, I'm not one to gossip. This isn't his bed, but this is where his bed would have been. But that is a replica, and through there would have been his bathroom. But when Queen Victoria came, she wasn't very keen on Brighton. She thought it was too busy. And Victoria took most of the things, or as much as she could lay her hands on, and actually took it away from the Royal Pavilion back to various places in London with her. Even the glorious carpet in the music room she took the original and had it all cut up and laid in the servants quarters i'm <laughs> not amused you've got to say exquisite so i'll say it exquisite not been disappointed at all with the royal pavilion here in brighton it really is something else we're entering the lanes of Brighton now, famous for its antique shops, but in the past it was the old fishing quarters of the then village, now town. Well, in this weather it's time for a very hot spaghetti bolognese. And I'm going to meet Martin Sirk, head of Brighton and Hope Tourism, whose job it is to bring in the visitors. But who made it fashionable? Was it King George IV? No, well, George actually came because it was already fashionable. It was a guy called uh, Dr. Richard Russell who invented a seawater cure, which he, of course, being a very clever marketeer, insisted that you could only take the seawater cure in Brighton. 
and he would have these very big burly women who would grab the, uh, the clients who stayed in his hotel because of course it was desirable to stay en suite and they would drag these people down to the seafront at about two in the morning and dunk them in the water when it was at its coldest uh, and then force them to drink hot, boiling hot seawater by the pint mixed with various ingredients which I, I really ought to remember but he included cream of tartar, prepared viper flesh, um, squashed up wood lice and various other fine delicacies. And I understand that George tried it once and then decided that the rest of Brighton was very fine but the seawater cure could go and look after itself. So I emerged from these bushes, I better brave the elements. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, excuse yes. me, I'm sorry you're eating. Oh, hello, Russell. But, uh, hello. Oh, I'm recognised. <laughs> nice. I know you. Well, whereabouts um, do you come from? Oh, we're just here for a couple of days. Are you? We're from out of town. Are you? And you, you like Brighton? Love it. We come here to do our shopping. Yeah. What and we always eat here. Do you? Yeah. And what sort of uh, places do you like to go and shop? Oh, the lanes, just here. Oh. Wonderful clothes. And Michele, my son, he likes to go to the North Lanes. Yeah, find out why. Yeah. Find out why. Michele, the son, why do you like the North well, Lanes? Well, it's just got such great variety and there's so many different shops there and modern things to buy there. It's, well, it's great, listen, great I, I think the Director of Tourism's up there. Yeah. I think you better sign you two up. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> What's your yeah. name? I'm Sue. Sue and Michele. Okay. Uh, bon appetit. Whose chocolate is that? Oh, that's my husband's. He's just gone to the loo. Oh, right. No, Dad, have you got to keep him happy? He's got the credit cards. <laughs> I don't care. He's got the credit I love cards chocolate. up on the shop. Mm. I can't go with just one bite. I'm not going to... Oh, my goodness. This is heaven. Ciao. Ooh, they are little lanes round here. Lucky to get through it after all that chocolate. Well, it's a really... Well, not quite so bright day in Brighton. In fact, it should be called Dalton. But there is the West Pier. And... Over the years, it's become more and more derelict, and it's known as the Queen of Piers, and it needs to be. Look at that heaving sea. Well, we're heading towards the West Pier, but I feel as though I'm heading towards the ends of the earth here, Rachel. Now, we're coming towards, what would this have used to have been? This was the concert hall, um, and it was, uh... It, it had various incarnations, but it was obviously, as the name suggests, a place for, for music. And, and pigeons. I just saw one yes, flutter Yes, lots past. of pigeons. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh, I don't like pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I hate pigeons. Oh, and I'm full of like Alfred Hitchcock, oh, dear, the birds. Oh, dear, for you. Well, we made it to the concert hall, and I'm surrounded by pigeons all watching me. I tell you, like the birds. Mm -hmm. Just like the birds. They're waiting to swoop in on me and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> what was this place in the concert hall? It's literally what it said. Yes. They had concerts. Yes, yeah, exactly. And it had, uh, in its final stages in the 1960s, it was a venue for old-time musical, actually. So that was the last usage of it. But, uh, no, it was originally built as a concert hall. Why did it fall into rack and ruin? It was gradual neglect after the war. The company that owned the pier really didn't invest real money, decent enough money to keep it going, and didn't have good enough new ideas, really, in my opinion. And so over the decades, it gradually declined and declined until by the early 70s it had become a dangerous structure and had to be closed. Very, very sad. So we're on here now, a dangerous structure, hence we're wearing life jackets and hats and... Not the sort of garb you'd wear for a nice day out. Not are really, they? no, not really, but not for much longer with any luck. You know, the restoration should be beginning soon. So. Well, let's walk along here because there's another yep. building up yep, there. Yep, Whether yep. we actually get to it, Rachel, oh, I God. don't know. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Yeah. But how have you now managed to uh, restore it? Well, uh, we've had, so far, we've had a million pounds, or just short of a million pounds, from the National Lottery, which has meant that we have been able to perform some what we describe as emergency works to hold it up to make sure more d damage didn't occur but we are expecting to get an up to another 14 million from the lottery because we've also found commercial partners who will be putting in about 10 million pounds and that should totally restore the pier and we think that should be happening very soon now and you know what day it's going to open well well we're aiming <laughs> at the millennium we're aiming at the millennium maybe not the first of january but sometime during that year we wish you well. Are you ready to brave the elements and go? You are. You are very brave people. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Off we go, Rachel. Blooming heck, Rachel. Oh, this is incredible, all of this. 
the balcony would have obviously gone down there and the yes, stage yes, would have been exactly. there. Yeah, that's right. And they'd that's have right. seen that. Yeah, yeah. It might look a sorry state now, but once Rachel and her gang have got to work on it, it'll be gleaming, just like the Palace Pier. So I think I'll hop along and have a little stroll along the prom, 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 or pier, pier, pier. Oh, this is lovely now, the sun's coming out. Oh, there we are, fresh, delicious. Welks, cockles, mussels and prawns, that's real pier food. Now, is this the one by Graham Greene? This is certainly where, of course, that novel was set. And the Indian palmist. Closed due to unforeseen circumstances. The old ones are the best. Shall I? Oh. Have I gone into the wrong hole? Let me in the other hole. <laughs> <laughs> you made me do some stupid things. Well, that's it. Albida Zane, cheerio, Pavel, sayonara, hi, Vasti, adieu.